Jehovah. Tambira Jehovah. Tambira Jehovah. Tambira Jehovah. Tambira Jehovah. Tambira Jehovah. Tambira Jehovah. Tambira
want to worship you this morning, Lord. You deserve the worship, Lord, Father, King of Kings. Here we are to worship your holy name. We want to bless you, Lord. We want to honor you, my master. How excellent is your name, Lord. How precious is your name, Jesus. Everybody raise up your voices and worship God. He deserves the praise. He deserves the praise. We bless you, Jesus, Lord. We honor you. Church, can you give God a mighty hand clap? That is not enough for what He has done in our life. Give Him a big hand clap. Hallelujah. We are so happy to be in the presence of the Lord. Amen. David said, I was so glad when they told me to go to, the, to, go to the house of the Lord. Also, I am more glad to be in the presence of God. Can you give it a big hand clap? I once again welcome you in the presence of God. Thanks for coming. Feel at home. Yeah? Whenever you come in the house of the Lord, you feel at home. You feel at peace. Amen? I request you to take your seats, please. Choir, don't leave. Hallelujah. We are so happy to be the lead of this morning service. Amen. Hallelujah. We are called the teens, the destiny choir. We are few for now, but during holidays, this pulpit goes to overflow. Amen. Amen. And we thank God who enabled our kids to complete the term. It has been a long term, but we say Ebenezer. Hallelujah. We faced many challenges, but God made us to overcome. Hallelujah. I greet you once again. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. How are you? You look so smart. Hallelujah. I'm by the name Stiajuko Manso Kevin. I love my name, and I'm proud of my name. Hallelujah. We are so happy. 
and I'm so glad to be your coordinator this morning. Mostly, I want to thank God. Our Papa is in the house with us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. First, give a hand clap for these little ones. They have done a good job. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whenever they get a chance to come and minister, they feel so happy. I know parents you can witness. They say, Mommy, I want to come to church. We thank you so much for sending these kids to come and do practices. Hallelujah. These are our special announcements. Tell your friend, Retreat. Tell your friend, Retreat. This is Teens Retreat. It has been a long time when teens they don't go for Retreat. But on 20th of August, teens are going for Retreat. Hallelujah. And every parent is requested to pay 30000 Hallelujah. That is little money. I know. It's a little money. Let us invest in our kids and they go for a retreat. They will do a lot of activities. They will enjoy. And they will come and they will testify to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And on 21st August, it's going to be a Waka Waka concert in this place. Hallelujah. Please come and support our mama, Sylvia Abtai. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And on 28th of August, it's going to be a teen seminar. Hallelujah. You see, in August, teens are occupied. We don't give Satan a chance. Amen. And that seminar, and it will be our Sunday, the main service. Hallelujah. In the evening, we shall come on 28th, and we shall have a guest speaker who is going to speak into our lives. One of our guest speakers is our papa. He's going to speak in our lives. And we are going to have another outsider speaker who is going to also come and speak in our lives. Amen? I request every parent, please send your kid. They have faced many challenges at school. Come and speak to us. And our life will not remain the same. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! And on this Saturday, this coming Saturday, it's going to be a discipleship class. Hallelujah. Our pastor organized a discipleship class. Come and we study. This Saturday. At 4 p.m. we are starting. Please, if you're a member, you're a minister, come. And your life will never be the same. Hallelujah. Invite your friend. Come and they learn. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And... I think these are the end of our special announcements. But I request parents, this holiday, we need your children. Hallelujah. To, to be to organize for this 28th, and it will be powerful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. Can we stand up on our feet? We are going to worship our Lord. Prepare your heart for the word of God. He deserves the praise. He deserves the worship. We need your Holy Spirit to come and dwell in our hearts. We need you, Holy Spirit. Don't leave us, O oh Lord. Don't forsake us, Jesus. We need you. My master, we need you in our families, we need you in our, in our businesses, Lord. Come and dwell in our presence, Lord. Nothing can give you just to worship your holy name. You deserve the praise. You deserve the worship, Lord. There's one like you, Jesus. You have done great things in our lives. You have passed us through the week, Father King of Kings. You have made our children overcome the time, Father King of Kings. That's why we are here to worship your holy name, Lord. You are holy. Holy, you are holy. You are holy. Holy, you are holy. 
Lamb of God, seated at the right hand of the Father, you are holy, holy, you are holy, you are holy.
15,000 children roaming on the streets of Kampala. So magnify the name of the Lord, everyone, for his goodness, for his faithfulness. We are not what we are because we've been so good before him. We are what we are because he's so good. And his word of praise, just magnify him. We bless your name, Jesus, Lamb of God. There's no one like you, Jesus. He has done good things for us. hands us that you are worthy. As we organize, I mean, as you go through the month of um, 
August, the women will be meeting on the 17th and the 24th. Okay, two Wednesdays this month, and I want to encourage all the women to plan on that. It's one of the ways to strengthen our fellowship through discipleship. Women will be meeting on the 17th and the 24th this month. It's going to be Wednesday, two Wednesdays this month. And then the men will be meeting on the 14th and the 18th. This is going to be immediately after the Sunday second service. Men decided to meet on Sundays. There's going to be Sundays. Uh, I mean, it's going to be the 14th and the 28th of, um, of this month. Amen. Now let us turn to our Bibles in the next few minutes and read a few scriptures from the book of Psalms. We're going to read two Psalms, Psalms 20. And I want us to read from verse 1. Psalms 20 from verse 1. Then we shall go to Psalms 33. You have your Bibles? Amen. All right. Psalms 20. I want us to read from verse 1. Now, the context of Psalms 20 it is about David and his army. They are about to go to war. And before these people went to war, they would first of all come in the temple to seek the approval of God. And so as we read this psalm, Psalm 20, David is about to lead his army into war, but listen what David does. No wonder David, though he was imperfect, he led a victorious life. Even up to today, his life still speaks to us. Psalms 20, let us read from verse 1. May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. May the name of the God of Jacob defend you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and strength and strengthen you out of Zion. May he remember all your offerings and accept your burnt offering. May he grant you according to your heart's desire and fulfill all your purpose. We will rejoice in your salvation and in the name of the Lord God, we will set up our banners. May the Lord fulfill all your petitions. Now I know that the Lord saves his anointed. He will answer him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. Let us all read together verse 7. Some trust in chariots, and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God, for they have bowed down and fallen, but we have risen and stand upright. Save, Lord, may the King answer us when we call. Now David was a man of war. David was a courageous man, but David did not trust his own strength. First one talks about a day of trouble that came to befall a man after God's own heart. In other words, it doesn't matter how much faith you have, days of trouble will one day knock on your door. And for some of you, it is possible that trouble is already around you. In that day of trouble, verse 7 is one of the greatest comforting scriptures. Some trust in chariots and some in horses. But we will remember the name of the Lord our God. They have bowed down and fallen, but we have risen and stand upright. Now this morning I want to talk about trusting God. Everybody say trusting God. One more time say trusting God. Psalms 33. I want us to read verses 16 verse 19 are we all there verse 16 says that no king is saved by the multitude of an army a mighty man is not delivered by great strength a horse is a vain hope for safety neither shall it deliver any by its 
own great strength. Behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him, on those who hope in his mercy, to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. For our heart shall rejoice in him because we have trusted in his holy name. Let your mercy, O Lord, be upon us just as we hope in you. Now, as we all look at what is going on around us, there's a lot of turmoil everywhere. Trouble is not only in Uganda. Trouble is everywhere. Do you agree with that? There is bad news everywhere. Bad news everywhere. People have lost hope. It was this week when I was reading a story about one of the great women in, in, in Hollywood who committed suicide this week. This woman has been having a household name. People have been admiring her for years because of her talent and giftings. But this week, she was found lying naked on her bed with a bottle of um, pills that she took, and she's dead right now. So it doesn't matter where you are, it doesn't matter how much money you have, how, the position that you have. We are what I believe I want to call a time of trouble. But in every trouble for a believer, listen to Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 to verse 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Trust the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him, and he will make your paths straight. Trust the Lord with all your heart. As a believer, you have a choice to live trusting God with all your heart, or to live leaning on your own understanding. In the night when trouble comes, we, want to, we, 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 we would love to handle things in our own way. Someone abuses you, you want to abuse them. Someone curses you, you want to curse him. Someone betrays you, you have these revengeful thoughts, I will do something worse against them. But if you want God to fight our battles, we must trust God, not half-heartedly. We must trust him with all of our hearts. Someone say amen. Then he goes on to say, lean not on your own understanding. If you and I can commit all our ways before him, listen, the promise here is he's going to make your paths straight. That's a wonderful promise. Now for a believer, listen to what the Bible says in the book of Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 18. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 18. The path of the righteous is like the morning sun shining ever brighter till the full light of day. Now this is the portion of every believer, of everyone that has put their trust in God. According to this verse, your tomorrow will always be better than yesterday. That is the promise of God. If you had pain yesterday, God is promising you tomorrow is going to be much better. And I want us to have this attitude or this faith in our hearts. What I'm going through is not the conclusion of the matter. What I have on my bank account is not the end of how much I'll ever have in my life. Are you following me? Your tomorrow will always be better when you put your trust in God. Luke 22, verse 31 to verse 32. The picture here is of a mighty apostle by the name of Peter. Peter assures Jesus, everybody's going to run away from you. They're going to forsake you, but I'm going to stand with you. If you're going to prison, I'll be with you. If you're going to die, I'm going to die with you. Jesus told him that Peter, Satan has asked to sift you like wheat. Are you following me? 
but I've prayed for you. If men like Peter could be sifted and could be shaken, you're going to be shaken. And these are times of being sifted. When trouble comes, when a storm comes your way, it has only come to reveal where your trust is. I told you some time ago, I had a call from a lady who watches us on our social media platforms. She was a believer in church. Then trouble came. Challenges came her way. Trials came. Someone spoke to her and gave her an advice, go and, and be attended to by a witch doctor. So she walked from church and she ended up in a shrine. And you know what she told me? Things got worse in my life. So when trouble comes your way, it has only come to reveal where your trust is in your life. Anybody can trust God when things are good, when the job is good, when you are making the right grades, when your marriage is prospering, when your ministry is growing. Anybody can trust God in good times. But what happens when you are facing trouble in your life? That is where trust must come in. David was the man of war. David has a testimony behind him. He is a giant slayer. Everybody feared David. But before David goes to battle, 23, he goes in the temple. If you are following me, say amen. Now why should we trust God? Number one, God knows better than what you know. Did you hear what I said? Why should I trust God? Number one, he knows better than what I know. When you pray to God and God says not to you, he knows better than what you know. Are you following me? Are you following me? Now this word trust is a five-letter word. And in brief, you can write down, write down these things. Letter T, this is my acronym of this word trust. Letter T is for trials. Everybody will face trials in life. When a trial comes your way, why does it come? God knows better than you do. So trials are going to come your way. Letter R is when trials come your way, watch the way you think. Remember what God has done for you in the past. You are challenged. You are facing a storm. You are sinking in your life. Everybody is rejecting you. Remember what God has been doing for you in the past. Are you following me? Letter U is utterance. When a trial comes your way, when you open your mouth, what word comes out first? In times of trial, always watch what comes out of your mouth. Huh? Have you ever seen people, they face a problem, and all of a sudden they say, oh, I am dead. I'm like a dead dog. That's who you are. When a trouble comes, or trend, when trouble comes your way, you're about to fall. What comes out of your mouth? For a normal person, they're going to call, oh, my mother. In the book of Mount Simi. Then that means that you're trusting your mother who is already dead. Are you following me? When trouble comes, what word, what, what's the first word that comes out of, out of your mouth? If you're a believer, what you say reveals what has filled your heart. Someone say amen. Later S, it has to do with the issue of supplication. In times of trouble, never allow your trouble to draw you away from God. If you are going to benefit from your trouble, let your troubles always draw you closer and closer to God. Financial troubles draw closer to God. Marital issues draw closer to God. You failed in your great grades at school, draw closer to God. Any trouble that draws you away from God is going to become a much bigger trouble. But any trouble that draws you closer to God, it is going to turn into a testimony. So the last letter, T, is for a testimony. So in between the trials and the testimonies, these are the principles that I want to encourage you in 
to practice. Between your trials and the testimony, there are principles to practice. If you're following me, say, my trouble will turn into a testimony. Speak like you believe it one more time. Say, my troubles will always turn into a testimony. Now think about this script in the book of Luke chapter 11 and verse 40. Mary and Martha love Jesus and Jesus loves them. Lazarus gets sick. Their first response was, Jesus come, the one that you love is sick. That is the first response for every believer. In every trouble, your first invitation must not be the doctor, the pastor, your friend. Your first invitation must be Jesus. Are you following me? When you are facing trouble, don't first of all think about talking about talking to your leader. They are as human as you are. If you're going to turn your trials into a testimony, call upon God first. So Mary and Martha, they call Jesus. He comes four days later. Lazarus is dead. He's in the grave. Verse 40, look, John 11. Jesus said, he didn't I tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God. Now, let me ask you a question. Which one is a bigger testimony? The healing of Lazarus or the resurrection of Lazarus? Huh? I mean, all of them are testimonies, but that I believe that it is a greater glory to God when a man is raised from the world of the dead. So God knows better than you do. Even when you think that my situation is dead, I can never get out of this. He knows better than what you know. Are you following me? And on God's mind, he has nothing on his mind for your failure. When I look at the character of God, whatever you are going through will always work out for your good. Always. Always. Facing a challenge in your marriage, in your finances, God knows better. Why he allows what he allows in your life. How many people have we read about in the Bible that faced severe trials? Think about Job. I mean, these are the normal stories read in the Bible, but we have to practice what they practiced. Are you following me? Job lost how many children? Ten. So Job in his backyard, he has ten graves. Job loses all his wealth. Are you following me? Then the enemy came and attacked his body, and he has boils all over his body. He could not even sit on a chair. They only brought a heap of ashes for him to sit on. His wife came and said, I love you, my husband, Job, but looking at the things the way they are, this is my advice. Curse God and die. She's fed up. What does Job do? Job 1.20. The Bible says that Job bowed down and Job worshipped God. That is trust. Are you following me? That is trusting God. If he gave me children and they are gone, he has not forgotten me. If he gave me wealth, though it is gone, he has not forgotten me. No wonder we celebrate the end of the life of Job. God gave him twice. Why? God knows better than you know. So even when you feel like I'm frustrated, I'm disappointed, I'm crying, don't you turn away your heart from trusting God. Someone say amen. One more time, lift up your hands and declare, my trials will be turned into testimonies in the mighty name of Jesus. Declare that one more time. That my, my trials will be turned into testimonies in the mighty name of Jesus. If you really believe that, shout amen. Amen. Second reason why we must trust God. All things are possible before God. When the Bible talks about all things are possible before God, it means all things. Your health, your wealth, your family, your dreams, all things are possible before God. I personally believe that God has a dream for all of you, 
How many of you have dreams? You have a dream of some things getting better. All of us. We all have dreams. Now, if God gives you a dream, do you think that he cannot fulfill that dream? He can't. If God has given you a promise in his word, do you think that doesn't have the power to deliver? All things are possible before God. Now, all of us know the life of Joseph. Joseph had great dreams. All of us know. Are you following me? We know the path of Joseph for 13 years. It was a path of trials. It was a path of being rejected by his own. It was a path of being lied about and being thrown in prison when he was innocent. But because God had given him a dream and Joseph had his eyes on God, the key word in the story of Joseph is God was with him. Let me say this. If God is with you, it doesn't matter where you're thrown. In a den of lions, it is going to become a testimony in your life. Are you following me? If you're following me, say amen. God was with Joseph when he was being thrown in a pit. So when you're facing a trial, a trial it doesn't mean absence of God in your situation. Even when you were in a pit, God is with you in that pit. Well, if God is with, is with me in the pit, I mean, why does he allow me in the first place to go in the pit? He knows more than you know. Are you following me? Lied about and I'm convicted in prison because I said no to a prostitute, the wife of my master. Why in prison? God knows more than you know. It may be a painful path, but God knows. Now for us, you have read the, read the scriptures, you know that story. God knew. He was going to connect Joseph to the palace, but from the prison cell. The one that connected Joseph to the palace was also a prisoner. So wherever you are, it doesn't mean that because I'm in a trial, God is absent. As a matter of fact, God is much closer to you in your trials. Did you hear what I say? Have you read about a story of someone that had a dream facing a severe trial? The dream was he was walking by the, by the side of a lake and he saw Jesus holding his hand and they are walking and there were footprints by the seaside. Two people were walking. But then you saw there was a time where the trials were so severe. And when you looked at the path, it was like only one person was walking along that place and asking why. I first saw two people walking, Jesus and me walking, but there was a place where it was only one person walking. And God told him that was a time when I knew you could not face life alone. So I lifted you up. That's why you could not even trace your footprints. The point here is when trials are so severe in your life, God is closer to you than you think. So don't allow the enemy to, to, enemy to, to, to lie to you that because I'm in a trial, God has abandoned me. I want us to develop this attitude of trust. The most severe my trouble is, the closer my God is in my life. Lift up your hands and declare, my trials this month will be turned into testimonies in the name of the Lord. Someone shout a big amen. Amen. Now listen to 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9. However it is written, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no heart has conceived what God has in store for those that love him. How many of you love God? You love God? Kids, you love God? Now this is a promise for all of us. Your eye has not seen, your ear has not heard, your heart has not conceived what God has in store for you. In other words, God has a store for every one of us. 
Amen. What he's saying here, it is only for those that love him. If you love God on his mind for you, there is no failure. Let us trust God. Why? One, he knows more than we know. Two, all things are possible. And number three, God is worthy of all our trust. I've trusted men that have let us down. Is that true? We have trusted our jobs which are already gone. Some have trusted their parents, they have let them down. We have trusted political leaders, they have let us down. We have put our trust in doctors and nurses, but they are as human as we are. Have you ever been let down? Amen? Have you ever let down anybody? Of course I can see that on your face. Are you following me? But God has never let down anybody. Clap your hands unto the Lord. One more time, clap, clap, clap your hands unto the Lord. Amen. Tell me one person that you know that God let down. Nobody. So God is worthy of all our trust. Now as I talk about trust, what does trust mean? Trust means to have confidence in the reliability, the truth and ability of someone. You have confidence in the reliability, the truth, and the ability of someone. Amen. Now, in your situation, do you trust that God is able to deliver? Can you trust God with your health? If he raised Lazarus, who had been rotting for four days, I can trust him with my headache. Are you following me? If he raised a man who had been rotting in the grave for four days, I can trust him when I have any challenge in my life. Let us trust God. We are going to see trials turned into testimonies. He knows more than you know. All things are possible before him. He's worthy of our trust. And number four, he knows what he's doing. He doesn't only know more than I know, but he knows what he is doing in your life. As a young person, some of you know my testimony. I was going to the U.S. as a young man for Bible school. And I got stranded at Heathrow Airport. When I came to the immigration, they asked me, do you have a return ticket, uh, uh, do you have a full ticket to US where you claim you're going? I did not have it. Do you have a return ticket to Uganda? I did not have it. All that I had was a one-way ticket to Europe. Because a man, a friend of mine had promised me, find your way to England, I'm going to send you a ticket from England to the US. And I'm going to find for you a Bible school, and I'm going to pay all your dues. Now I reached reach Heathrow Airport, and they asked me a question that, that I could not answer. They asked me, do you know the person receiving you from the airport? I did not know him. I only knew a friend of this person. They took me out of the line they told me, sit over there. And I sat there for hours. In my mind, the devil was telling me, shame on you. You're going to go back to Uganda. Are you following me? That was one of the greatest trials in my life as a young person. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. But after a while, by God's grace, this man that I had not met at all told the immigration, I'm going to take care of all his needs. He had a great, a big job in London. And after a while, I saw this man from the immigration come and apologize, or uh, I, I, I apologize, sir, but please go through the immigration. I went through the immigration. Reaching where he was, I called my friend in the U.S. and told him that, well, praise the Lord, I'm already here. Send me a ticket that you promised. The man told me, Fred, 
I was only joking. Then he hung up the phone. I did not know what to do. This man that had promised the immigration to take care of me gave me only two weeks to stay in his house. Then one day he came and told me, your time is up. You either go back to Uganda or you leave my house. If I had a ticket to come back, that would have been the best option. But I did not have a ticket. I did what I know to do. I prayed every morning. It was winter. I'd never experienced winter. Winter time. I would go by River Thames early in the morning and cry to God. And I would tell God, I know you told me to go to a Bible school. I know you gave me a promise. You'll always provide for me. I prayed. Two weeks went by. Nothing happened. The man told me, I'm giving you three days to leave my house. In those three days, I called upon God. I said, Lord, I know you are with me. Lord, I know you promised me. During that time, a friend, a, a lady staying on the same apartments told me, she came and met me and told me, we've been watching you and we've been praying for you. And God has told you, don't worry, he knows the end of the story. That was the message. Nothing more, nothing less. Well, if he knows the end of the story, what, what is the next step? My point here is, when God gives you a promise or a dream, it, it is always a progressive revelation. Your need is to trust him, even when things are going the opposite direction. Someone say amen. Well, this lady, God used her to connect me with a man that I would not met for six years. Now, this man, we had been in the same choir here in Kampala. His name is Abraham. But for six years, I had not known where he was. By God's miracle, he connected me with this brother. I went to his home, and he had a big, big house in London. He told me, Fred, whenever you want to come here, this is a big room, free. You can come in any time. But, but by the time he tells me, come in any time, where I was, I was now sleeping in a kitchen. And when sometimes we think that everybody abroad is rich, that is a lie. And I can testify about that. I was living in a kitchen for three days. But now God opened a door for me. I moved in the house of my brother Abraham together with his family and I had a big room for myself. Oh, clap your hands unto the Lord. Now, the reason I'm telling you this is at that moment in time, that was a big trial in my life. But today I look back and I see in that house we began Agape Miracle Center, which is still there in London. During that time we began Ego Christian Fellowship, it is still there in London. The point here is when you put your trust in God, He can turn your trials into testimonies. So if you're facing a challenge right now in your life, look beyond the challenge. Look at the testimony in the making. Seek in your body. How can you testify God can heal if you have never been sick? If you're suffering financially, look beyond the financial trials. Look at a God who has promised, I'll give you power to make wealth. Or someone say, Amen. Help me tell your neighbor that my God knows what he's doing in your life. One more time, tell him that my God knows what he's doing in your life. So as you talk about this issue of trusting let us believe in the reliability of God. God is reliable. I say that God can be relied on. Someone say amen. Briefly, let us finish by reading in the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 3. You know the story. But I want to remind you of three young men that faced trials in life. But before that, write the scriptures down. Psalms 66 and verse 10. For you, O Lord, have tested us. You have tried us like silver is tried. 
James chapter 1, verse 2 to verse 4. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature, complete, and lacking nothing. Are you following me? Trials come your way. They can become productive in your life. When a trial comes your way and you keep on trusting God, when a testimony comes, you'll be wiser, stronger, and better. That is one of the benefits of trials. Have you ever been let down? Of course. Why were you let down? Now you know. You won't repeat the same mistakes. Have you ever begun a business and it failed? If it's a yes, now you know what works and what doesn't work. Have you ever trusted a brother or sister and they let you down? If the answer is yes, now you know you must not always open your heart to everybody. So when a trial comes your way, it will make you wiser, stronger, and better. James is saying you're going to be mature, complete, and lacking nothing. In the words of Jesus, John 16, 33, I have told you all these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you'll have trouble. Are you in this world? How many of you are in this world? Let me see your hands. Some of you think that you are in heaven. No, you're not yet there. Are you following me? Jesus said that in this world, you will have trouble. In this world. So don't you think that when I leave Uganda and I go to Asia or Dubai or America, or I am going to be trouble free. As long as you are in this world, you are going to have trouble. But that's not the end of the verse. He goes on to say, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Take heart. I have overcome the world. If Jesus faced trouble, you will face trouble. If David faced trouble, you will face trouble. If Paul faced trouble, you will face trouble. Allow your troubles to draw you closer to God. Are you following me? If the relationship is not working well, come closer to God. If the business is not going well, come closer to God. You will turn your trials into testimonies. Turn to the book of Daniel, chapter 3. Daniel, chapter 3. Let us read several verses from here. If you're here, say Amen. That's the weak amen. Say Amen. Okay, quickly. Daniel chapter 3. I'm reading verse 4. You know, the king has set up a statue and he has commanded everybody in his kingdom, when you hear the music, everybody must bow down and worship the image. Listen now verse 4. Then an announcement, then a herald cried out, to you it is commanded, O people of nations and languages, that at the time you hear the sound of the horn, flute, harp and lyre, and satire, and symphony with all kinds of music, you shall fall down and worship the God image that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast immediately into the midst of a burning fury furnace. Go to verse 15. Now, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are facing a trial. Now, trial may not always mean a sickness. It could be a temptation. Are you following me? You are being tempted to watch and becoming movies. You are tempted to do what everyone is doing and the temptation is so strong in your life. That's a trial. When you say yes, you're going to have a momentary pleasure to your flesh. When you say no, 
God is going to reward you. It doesn't matter the consequence, but God will fight your battles. Now these three young men are saying, no, we're not bowing. Listen to verse 15. Now they have been called again, and the king is telling them, now if you are ready, at the time you hear the sound of the horn, flute, harp, lyre, satyr, in symphony with all kinds of music, and you shall fall down and worship the image which I have made, good. But if you do not worship, you shall be cast immediately into the midst of the burning fairy furnace. And who is the God who will deliver you out of my hands? I think about this. These are young men trying to make things work, trying to survive. They are serving a king who had killed their parents, and God has, had promoted them into leadership. And now the king is telling them, if you say yes and you bow, I'm going to promote you. If you don't, a furnace of fire is waiting for you immediately. Now what would you do? Let me ask you a question. If there was a real fire out there, and someone comes and says, if you say I am a believer in Christ, I'm sending you in the fire. If you can simply say no to him, go back to your homes. Now, truthfully, how many of you will say yes to the fire because of your faith? Only one. Huh? Because men are going to church this fire and say, well, let me run home and repent. But these young men said no to the fire and that's why up to today their testimony is still ringing in the whole world. Are you following me? So the king commands, you don't have any God as strong as I am. Nobody can take you out of my hands. The boy said no to your demands. Let us read verse 28 in conclusion. We know the fourth man appeared because I've told you that in every fire, in every fire, the fourth man or the second man or woman, a supernatural one, will always be there. Did you hear what I said? God cannot leave you alone in that fire. In that tragedy, in that pain, God cannot leave you alone. The king looked in the fire and he told his, his fellow leaders, didn't we throw in three? They said, yes. I can see four. One, two, three. And the fourth one looks like the son of God. That is the beauty of trials when they come in our lives. Oh, clap your hands unto the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. The fourth man did not hinder them from being thrown in the fire. He was only waiting for them in the fire. So if you're facing any trial, any disappointment, any frustration, keep trusting God. You are not alone. He will turn your trials into a testimony. Someone shout amen. Now listen to verse 28. Nebuchadnezzar spoke saying, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants who trusted in him. If the Bible you're reading is yours, underline that word. He has saved his servants who trusted in him. And they have frustrated the king's word and yielded their bodies that they should not serve nor worship any god except their own god. Therefore, I make a decree that any people, nation, or language which speaks anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Let that person or nation be cut in pieces. And let their houses be made an ash heap. Because there is no other God who can deliver like this. There is no other God who can deliver like this. Or oh, someone shout, Amen. And then verse 30, Then the king promoted them. So what looked like a demotion in the furnace of fire became a promotion because they trusted in God. Or someone say, man, 
Are you facing a temptation? Are you trusting God to say no to a temptation and yes to Jesus? That is what turns your trials into a testimony. Are you facing a, a health issue, a financial issue? When you keep on doing the word of God, he turns your trials into testimonies. If someone say amen. Stand up on your feet, everyone. Just put your hands in your chest. Just close your eyes as you are. And I believe that the reason why God is bringing us this message to trust in Him, one, some of you may be feeling like God has abandoned me because of the pain that I'm going through. The devil can easily convince you God has abandoned you. That's why things are not working in your life. But I'm here to say, when we keep on trusting God, He becomes the fourth man as He was for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. When you keep trusting in God, and you lead Him to a place where you, your dreams were buried, your Lazarus was buried, He said that, didn't, you, didn't I tell you that if you will believe, you will see the glory of God. Lazarus came back to life. Why? They trusted what Jesus told them. Remove the stone. Don't give up on God. Don't you ever allow your trouble to weaken your prayer life. Don't you allow ever your financial challenge, the storm in your marriage, to weaken your prayer life. When you're facing a challenge at your place of work, I want to encourage you today, let that trial draw you closer to God in prayer, in fasting, and in reading His Word. Father, in the name of Jesus, you are the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. There is no other God but you that can do what no man can do for us. I pray for everyone, oh God, under the sound of my voice. Some are facing trials at their places of work. Some are facing frustrations in their relationships. Some feel like you have abandoned them. The devil is telling them, God has abandoned you. You are all by yourself. Holy Spirit, I pray that you come like fire burn in every heart burn in every heart raise us as a trusting believing people help us to grow in our confidence that you are reliable you are truthful you are able oh god of glory we worship you jesus lamb of god we put our trust in you and lord we ask for forgiveness in all ways that we have intended to lean on our own understanding. Forgive us in ways where you have taken things in our own strength, O God of glory. Be the fourth man in that marriage. Let a supernatural presence come in the life of someone that came with pain in their bodies. Let healing flow like a river in the mighty name of Jesus. Let there be reconciliation in that marriage, in that relationship. Let there be profitability in that business, O God of glory. Let there be fruitfulness in that ministry, in the life of that young man or woman that have said no to temptation and yes to Jesus. You helped Job. You helped David. You helped Joseph. You helped Paul. You helped Peter, oh God. Help someone that came this morning, Almighty God. Deliver us, Almighty God, from trusting chariots and horses, men or women, trusting our own abilities. Because those that trust in chariots have fallen down. But for us that have put our trust in you, we will stand firm. Our trials will be turned into some testimonies. We thank you, Father. And now I pray that the fire of God will 
break every chain in your life. Let the fire of God break every sickness in your body. Let the fire of God burn the presence of every demonic power in someone's life today. I rebuke demonic dreams from someone. I rebuke the spirit of evil fueling lust in someone's life. I break those powers in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lift those hands, everyone, and receive the blessing of God. Receive the healing power of God. Receive uncommon favor this month upon your life. Receive huge doors of opportunities for your life in every area of your life this month. May the Lord make you the head and not the tail. May the Lord raise you up and not beneath. May the Lord make you more than a conqueror wherever you're going to go this month. May the God of David be your God. May he send you help from heaven. May help come upon your family. The whole of this month, may you enjoy the testimonies of the living God. Father, we worship you and we thank you. For you have done much more than what you prayed for. In Jesus' name we pray. Shout Amen. One more time, shout Amen in Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Amen. Well, our time is gone. Let us prepare our offerings right now. If you came with a tithe, with a, an offering, we want to be a giving church. Or well, that's what we are. In the white envelopes, we put in building contributions. We are still on a campaign of driving away dust from here. Amen. Amen. So when God blesses you, he's expecting to come back and be a blessing to his house. If you're ready to give, stand up on your feet. Let us give to the Lord. Lift up your offering. Trust God with your finances right now. Father God, we entrust you with our financial circumstances. Even when we are facing challenges in our finances, we are trusting you to provide more than enough. And so this morning I pray for every giver, I pray for every tither, I pray for every sower of seed. Bless those offerings. Bless the work of the hands of the people that are coming to give in Almighty God. We bless you and we thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please march forward and give to the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Praise Him. Praise Him. We praise Him in the morning. Praise Him in the noontime. Praise Him. We praise Him. We praise Him when the sun goes down. We love Him. We love Hallelujah. Him. Before we say the grace, just take a, a, a seat for, for, for a minute, please. Amen. I said amen. Now this is a great year of blessings in this fellowship. Amen. We had a wedding, I think it was this year, of Rhoda and Derek. That's a testimony. Clap your hands unto the Lord. Amen. And... Um, now we have Brother Jacob. Are you happy for him? If you're happy, say Amen.
Brother Jacob has been with us for a long time. He's one of the ministers here. And we want to introduce him for the very first time before he gets wedded. Amen. So let us stand up on our feet. Let us welcome Brother Jacob Muanguzi to come. Please clap your hands, clap your hands, clap your hands and do the Lord. Creator, your soul was in the world. Amen. For the things I don't deserve. All right. I think all of you know who Jacob Mwangs is. Yeah. Okay, we see three men in front of us, and I'm going to ask Jacob to step ahead of others. Just take, a, take one step. <laughs> hey, Amen. That is Brother Jacob. And uh, let me ask Esther Nachanzi. To be escorted to come here. Please clap your hands and do the Lord, everyone. Before I was born, clap, 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 clap your hands in the mighty name of me Jesus. That he knows me by name. I need a man in the world, Mugaso Edikwanga. Say, say, let's say, superstar in Uganda. Who knew that you'd become what you are today? What they got on that too? Car, what you want, my love for sins. Amen. Amen. I said, Amen. Now, those are three beautiful ladies, but I'm going to ask Esther to take a step ahead of the others. Okay? All right. All right. All right. All right. Now, that is our brother Jacob Mwanguzi, and that is Esther Nachianzi. Amen. Amen. So we're making our first announcement that on the 1st of October this year, we are going to have Jacob and Esther wedded in this place. Amen. This is our first announcement. I'm going to ask you to be praying for them. And soon they're going to be launching their meetings. We want to support them as much as we can. But we're making our first announcement. And then the other, other announcements are going to come later about how we are supposed to support them. Stretch your hands toward them. Let us pray. Father God, we are so grateful for Jacob and Esther. Lord, there is a reason why you gave them biblical names, Jacob and Esther. We, but we stretch our hands as the church. This is part of our family. We pray your blessing upon their lives, Almighty God. We pray for what lies ahead of them between now and the 1st of October. And then for decades to come, strengthen their faith, O God of glory. Let barriers be removed. Let your blessings and uncommon favor overtake them, Almighty God. We bless your name and we thank you, Father, because we know you have already blessed them as you are pursuing the paths of righteousness. In Jesus' name we pray. Let us all say, Amen. 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 All right, you can please go and take your seats. Okay, please escort them well. Clap your hands and to the Lord for them. Amen. Amen. We are so glad for Jacob, so glad for Esther in Jesus' name. And also yesterday, our sister, um, huh? Vicky, is she here? She couldn't be here. But yesterday she introduced her husband to be. Amen. And they're also going to be having their wedding uh, this year. We thank God so much for that blessing. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord be gracious to you. May the countenance of the Lord shine upon you. May your path always become brighter and brighter every other day the rest of this month. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God. May the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Let us all shout, Amen. Amen. Let us thank God again for our young people and their leaders. Thank you so much for leading us. And God bless you so much. 